Hi, I'm Juan Reyes, and this is a news update from Texas A&M International University at Laredo. On April 11th, District 6 held its first town hall meeting of the year at Divine Mercy Park to address questions residents had. It was also the first town hall meeting for the district's newly elected city council member, Dr. Tyler King. One major topic discussed was the Springfield Road Extension. Here we're focused a lot on the Springfield Extension that's happening right here. So it's a big thoroughfare, five lanes. It's great because it's going to alleviate traffic from McPherson, mm -hmm. uh, that Shiloh McPherson congestion everyone's always upset yeah. about. However, residents felt unsure about the road extension. A lot of residents here are concerned, especially if they live on the west side of Springfield, uh, and we're here at this beautiful park. They want to, their kids, the families, they want to be able to get here. Uh, so we're trying to find a way to make sure they have a safe crosswalk. The city plans to put a safe crossing at the Paz Trail and at the opening of Springfield to decrease traffic volume. This aligns with the city's goal to increase walkability and bring services closer to residents in a safer manner. The Laredo Health Department held a mass Narcan event on April 5th. The number of opiate overdoses has increased in the city of Laredo in recent years. We're seeing uh, more and more cases uh, at this point. You know, last year for the whole entire calendar year, we had 40 overdose deaths, which is a lot compared to the two years prior to that. SCAN hopes to minimize the number of overdoses by providing a Narcan training to the community. Although the training was for first responders in Laredo, Training can also be provided for residents in efforts to prevent overdoses. I thought it was going to be a wonderful idea to inform the community on Narcan and how important it was to have it so accessible. We do offer it completely free, so anybody really can just come and just get the Narcan and receive the training as well. Along with the program, the City of Laredo is also opening a new detox center. The detox center is projected to open in August. The detox center is a 24-bed facility. Um, it is an inpatient. so. Patients will be on average from two to seven days in the detoxification treatment process and can last up to 14 days depending on the regimen that is identified by the medical director. On April 11th, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency announced the draft law proposal under the Clean Air Act. This had been the outcome of continued activism against the EPA for not updating emission standards from medical sterilizer facilities in nearly two decades one of which being the Midwest Sterilization Corp, located here in Laredo. The Rio Grande International Study Center is a research and advocacy frontline organization in the town. Trisha Cortez explained why ethylene oxide emissions are an issue in Laredo. The reason this is very significant, and it was a huge day for Laredo, is because the last time the EPA reviewed the rule on ethylene oxide for sterilizers was 17 years ago and they are required by the Clean Air Act to review every eight years and, and update, you know, make these updates, and they've missed two deadlines. We contacted Midwest, but they were not available for comment. They released a pre-written statement. With summer fast approaching, the summer heat is a concern for Texans trying to stay cool. The city of Laredo has reached a temperature high of 99 degrees at the beginning of March this year. Temperatures are staying hotter in Laredo for longer periods of time. Well, we uh, average 178 days a year, nearly a half of the year that gets over 90. In 2011, we reached 90 or higher on 216 occasions. State Representative Cheryl Cole has introduced House Bill 2592 this session for the first time, which mandates functioning air conditioning and timely repairs for every rental unit in the state. This bill would mandate that an apartment owner have an air condition in their unit. And if there's a maintenance request where it's been broken, they must remedy that request within five days. According to the U.S. Census, an estimated 27,400 homes in Laredo would be impacted if the bill becomes law. The Texas Apartment Association has stated that they are in opposition to the bill. We reached out to Texas Apartment Association for further comment but have yet to hear back. On April 5th, the Texas Senate passed Senate Bill 12, prohibiting certain sexually oriented performances on public property, on the premise of a commercial enterprise, or in the presence of a child. The bill has garnered criticisms from LGBTQ plus groups who see it as infringing their First Amendment rights and a way to target minority groups and spaces. It goes against our First Amendment. Drag shows are just a 
a way of freedom of expression. It's an art. It's um, it's entertainment. Uh, movies have disclaimers, books, um, even music. Um, so if maybe that could be set with the drag shows, there shouldn't be an issue. Those in defense of the bill see the bill as a way to protect children from these shows. Uh, I think uh, people are going to be favoring the bills and they see that the bills are addressing uh, the issue of, of uh, children. And uh, there's a time and a place for everything. And uh, it will it will be, uh, I, will, I foresee that it, it will be a positive impact on the community. The House received the bill on the 6th. The bill has been referred to the Committee of State Affairs. That's all for now from Texas A&M International University. I'm Juan Reyes. Thank you for watching.